Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Buenos dias, and welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Mac Daddy Pete Robertson. They call me... Como esta, Pete? They call me Pedro. Pedro. Or, or Como esta, Pedro? In some, lang- some languages, it's Pietro. Why am I speaking Spanish today? Because this show is going to be launching or dropping the day before, the, or two days before, or three days before Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, the yeah. 5th of May. Yeah, we like Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, why? I just, I like Mexican. You like margaritas. Yeah. So, so <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, it's so funny is I've had a few margaritas in my time. Uh-huh. And usually when I've had one, it's because someone else had it. And I just, I drink a little bit off of theirs. Um, but I guess I kind of like the flavor. I don't know. It's but a margarita, but I really like the Mexican food. I mean, I, my, my grandma was from Mexico. So her, one of her, her mom was Mexican. Her dad was like, I think like Polish or something. And I, I don't know how that all happened, but I mean, Mexican is in my heritage and living in California. That's, I mean, it's everywhere. No. So fish tacos. Is that Mexican or is that California? Uh, that's Baja. It's Baja, right? Yeah. It's I different. love fish yeah. tacos. Yeah. But when you go to California, there you have a lot of hole in the wall. So you look at, you know, hole in the walls is like, okay, this doesn't look like much. Yeah. But the food is so good because you're they're you know, they cook the cockroaches with it, all the Ew, grease and stop. everything that you would normally get in Mexico. And oh, to make it all oh, you just ruined they're, Mexican they're, food for they're me. putting in their flavoring and their everything else. And it's just like oh, la cucaracha, so la cucaracha. <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good. But I don't know. Um you ever worn one of those those, those umbro hats? Sombrero? Sombrero hats sombrero. Only a Epcot. Yeah. Yeah. Those big old things. You do I got that. a picture of Sammy wearing one one year we were we were there. You remember that movie with uh, Chevy Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd? The three amigos. Three amigos. Yeah. Yeah, we have a poster we about have, it. We have a po- we did a poster of it. So <laughs> we should launch that. So on on we, we we'll put that, that out sure. so everybody can see. Uh, 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 Sinking a miles coming up. What else is new? Um, what else is new? It's just I don't know. You got the. Uh, What's going on? Mother's Day's coming up. You yeah. got the Kentucky Derby coming up. Yeah. Have you ever been? To, we, you ever had a desire to go to the Kentucky? I Derby? have. I have because okay. So talking about there's horses, like half a million people there, right? So I'm from again Southern California. There's a there's Santa Anita Parks there. There's a Los Alamo Los Alamitos, and then also Del Mar Racetrack. Oh, some big so, famous tracks. So I've been to Del Mar many times, and my grandpa was brought up. You know, brought us up to bring us to the racetracks. But I love. The paddock areas. I love seeing the horses. I love just going in the flowers and Del Mar is right on the water. So it's just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Um, and I just, I mean, I've been many times. I love it. When I was a kid, my dad took me to Saratoga. I can imagine. Gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Really fun. I mean, did you, how far did you live from there? About like 10 minutes. Oh, so you were close close to Saratoga. But I mean, it's just, it was so much fun. I mean, I don't know. So talking about horse races, why do we talk Kentucky Derby? So yes, I've, I've always wanted to go, but I don't like the commercial side of it where you have to dress up and the mint to mint, mint tulips, whatever they are. Juleps. Juleps. Yeah. Mint julep. Yeah. Anyway, it's horse racing. I like it. I'm not, you have to be careful though, because I'm not a gambler. So you, if I went, I would just. I know people hearing you like, oh, I love horse races. And then they just automatically think, oh, well, you're a gambler. No, 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 no. There's something different about no. being there. But I mean, the if you, and- but just say, for instance, you have $20 to spend. Okay. So you don't want to gamble because it can get you up. But this is, you have $20 to spend and you just do a place, a place show or, or I forget where they are now. But anyways, so you say you, you pick number 11 horse because you read about, you know, whatever, or you like the number 11 or whatever, the green. It's a lot of fun to root that horse around to see him come. I you used know? to have a favorite jockey. My dad would take me to the track. We, it was, it only runs for like four weeks in the summer, yeah. but we'd go a couple of times every summer. And there was a jockey. I still remember, I mean, 50 years later, Eddie Maple was his name. Oh, so man. I didn't care what horse he was on. I'd put $2 to win on Eddie Maple. And it was just fun. Yeah. Like you said, my dad would give me, you know, like, 10 bucks or something. It's like, here, you get to make five bets. And yeah. if you win, you win, whatever. And it, what makes it fun is like, they're coming around the back corner and you're standing there. Right. And you're just, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you know, and it's so much fun as they're coming and you see them getting, and when they win, it's like, yeah, it's just so much fun. I don't know. 
sounds i and love smells it and, i love it yeah it's pretty cool yeah down in um now don't if you're look if you're uh you have an issue with gambling oh don't, don't please don't go to the track <laughs> yeah don't please, hear please, please don't, don't hear us that. endorsing yeah, this no we're not we're not we're um, not endorsing gambling we're or, we just or love, any other vice we like the whole the beauty the glamour i guess i don't know i just Horses i love the feel beautiful creatures yeah they really are and fine. they're fast you don't I, you see it on tv like watching a no Caribbean. in person is different it's different in person it's, it's moving it's it's like i mean it's moving. just like going to an nfl game you watch them on tv you see it but when you're actually right there on the field yeah they're those guys are booking yeah don't bet on that either no <laughs> we'll do a show on betting should we gamble or not oh my goodness but see again i think what you hear from us is you're not here in legalism we're not we're not those people that are like oh my gosh because you bet on the football game we we're, you're never going to hear that from us you're just going to hear real guys that live a real life and we're going to share it real and we're going to share uh, the truth of it so that's right whatever you do if you have gambling issue jeepers, please creepers. please please all right. Well, let's go. So today we're going to talk about what is a divine appointment. Let me just kind of set this up. So I've had people, I've talked with people and they was like, well, I would say, oh, that's a divine appointment. Or like, what is that? You know? And, and it's like, you know, something that happened that's outside of the ordinary. It's like, there's no doubt that God planned that. There's no doubt that doubt that God intervened here. Right. It's just, it's one of those things that's not a coincidence there's no doubt that that God did. So I was talking with this person and and as I was talking with them, they're just like, I don't know if that's ever happened. So we were just sitting there talking about their life and, and trying to come up with maybe some times where there might have been a divine appointment. What I've learned in my own life is that we can, if God brings them up to me as I remember them, I just know divine appointments changed me. I just know that it 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 made me draw closer to the Lord. It made me just want to love him more, know him more, give him glory, give him praise. So I, I look at divine appointments like that. So if it's if it's in a, done in a way where you just recognize that this is God and then he gets credit for it, then we'll call it a divine appointment. But we're going to kind of dissect that and have some. Let's pray and go for it. All right. Lord, we love you. We thank you for uh, just the opportunity to do this show today. Lord, be with our listeners. I pray that uh, you would... Uh, speak to them in a new and fresh way today. And Lord, would you be with Pete and I as we uh, we go through this show and just give us the words to say, um, help us to just uh, just speak truth, Lord. But more importantly, let's just uh, we just want to give you all the credit and all the glory for this show today. Thank you for using it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right. So what is a divine appointment? Divine appointment refers to the belief that certain events or encounters are preordained by a higher power or destiny. In many religious and spiritual contexts, it suggests that the moments in a person's life are not merely random, but are instead orchestrated by the divine to fulfill a greater purpose or plan. This concept is often associated with a sense of providence or guidance, encouraging individuals to seek meaning and significance in their experiences, in their life experiences, trusting in the alignment between their path and their greater cosmic yeah. So, I mean, when I say, when we say cosmic will, we're talking about as a, as a Christian, we have a worldview that's a little bit different. So we understand that God is actively involved in our lives. And so God, there's a, there, we call it cosmic because it's divine. It's outside. It's, un, it's unseen, the unseen realm, right? It's, we don't know it. And then there's also cosmic geography and, and the cosmic geography is, where you know Satan once controlled land that now because of Jesus and his resurrection we now are able to take back that land through salvation so as we are ministering to other people we're we're we're, we're surrendering our lives you know to God and trusting him and we're we're talking about him and we're pointing people to Jesus they give their life to the Lord that land that they occupied once was controlled by Satan is now controlled by God so that's cosmic geography so the cosmic aspect of this is that there is God is working always around us. We know that the Bible talks about Elijah opening up his servant's eyes to be able to see all the angels all over the place. Mm -hmm. And there's constant things happening around us. And and in my own life, I've I've learned and 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 acknowledged like, whoa, that was supernatural. There's no way that is a coincidence. God intervened here. And so he gets glory. And I've so now for me, 
this happens all the time for me now. So I'm yeah. constantly recognizing, I have eyes to see, ears to hear. I'm constantly recognizing, no, God's involved in this. I just, I know that God's involved in this. I can just sense it. I just know. But there's a lot of Christians that have asked me or they've come to me and they said, well, I don't know if I really have experienced any divine appointments or I don't know what they look like. So that's why we're doing this. So let's just discuss that and just kind of unpack this and just let's just see where God leads it. All right, let's do it. So when someone speaks of a divine appointment, he or she is likely referring to an extraordinary event in a believer's life or a significant spiritual encounter with another person. Timing, purpose, and outcome of the experience seem to be orchestrated by God rather than simply random chance or coincidence. So there's two major ones that you and I have talked about on this show um, of divine encounters that we know of. So some divine encounters are smaller and some are like major where they're life altering, they're changing. Um, you know, for mine, there was a, there was an experience that I had where I was literally on my knees before God in my garage and God showed up. There's no doubt that God showed up. There's no doubt that he spoke to my spirit and there's no doubt that he gave me my next steps and he comforted me and got me through that night. Um, and, and that, that, that since that day, my life has been altered and changed. That divine appointment happened. Paul on the road to Damascus, that was a divine appointment. I mean, all of a sudden he saw a light and he didn't know what was going on, but his whole life was changed. So there are those kind of divine appointments, but there's also the divine appointments where, you know, has anybody ever said, oh, you're an angel, right? Well, you might've not known why you were there. Maybe you were just going through the motions, but God put something on your heart and your mind to help that person or to pull over the side of the road or to do something. And that person saw you as an angel to them. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that's a divine appointment. God, God brought it in. It's like you weren't planning it. You weren't knowing it, but you were just available to whatever God was doing. And God used you in that moment to bring him glory. And you were, and they, when God, they recognized that God was glorified in that moment. So that you know, I can see, but some might call a divine appointment, a God moment. They, they, these seemingly uncommon or common occurrences are often major milestones or turning points in our walk of faith. As we grow in knowledge, understanding, wisdom, discernment, and our ability to minister to others. I think divine appointments helps us, helps our faith grow. It helps our understanding of God grow, and it helps our understanding of who he is grow because he's a good God and divine appointments are basically showing how good he is. He's, he's in, we're, we're, we're experiencing the goodness in such a way, but the encounters may leave us with a strong conviction that what we are doing, uh, uh, what we are doing, the good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do, as it says in Ephesians, or that we need to repent or turn back. Sometimes like my garage moment, that divine appointment was Pete repent that a tidal wave is coming. A change is on its way. You are going to unlearn bad habits. You are going to go through turmoil and tribulation in your life for the next few years, and it's going to be very difficult, and it's going to be very hard. And with Paul, his divine moment, he's, he told Paul, he says, hey, listen, um, I know that you thought you are going to be a Pharisee, but I'm gonna, you're going to now face persecution, and you're going to face a lot of trials and a lot of beatings, and you're going to go through a lot, and I'm going to have you speak to rulers and, and kings now. And it's like, well, Paul's like, well, wait, what? So Paul had to unlearn. He that says he went away to Arabia for three years. He had to unlearn all of those bad habits that he picked up in religion and all of the things that he was doing. And so that divine appointment changed things. So divine appointments can be good where there's like, oh, praise the Lord. God showed up. I was in the middle of this. I'm going to die, whatever. Or they can be life altering. So anyway, that's the thought. In Acts 8. Verses 26 through 40, Philip experiences an undeniable divine appointment when an angel of the Lord sends him to share the gospel with an Ethiopian eunuch who just happens to be reading Isaiah's prophecy about the coming Messiah. This is a great story in Acts. I always tell people that, you know, the way that people, everybody says, well, you have to believe in Jesus to be saved. No, you have to have faith in God to be saved. You have to understand not just a God, but the God, Yahweh, right? The the one and only creator God. And because you look at Abraham, they didn't have circumcision. They didn't have all these sacrifices, but he was accounted to God as his friend. He was saved by faith, as the Bible says. Here's the Enoch, right? He he didn't believe in Jesus at this time, the Ethiopian. He was He came to Israel because he believed in the God of Yahweh. 
he was he was a Ethiopian that and in dark skin probably an Ethiopian as you can get and he believed in the God of Yahweh and and what God was doing in him is saying hey I'm stirring in you because you have faith in me and I have chosen you as my person as my child and and he's stirring in him and so here he is reading Isaiah and God says you know what I got your back I'm going to I'm going to help you through this. I I see your heart, Ethiopian. I see what you're doing. I see that you're working you're working out trying to figure this all out, but you're not fully grasping this. And so I'm going to help you. And so he brings Philip. And and Philip shows up and Philip's like, "Well, what am I doing?" right? And then he was realizes that, you think it was like a like a uh, teleporter. It's like he doesn't <laughs> know. It's like he's there. He doesn't know what he's there. And then he hears this guy Speaking on Isaiah and God reveals to him, that's what you're supposed to do. That was a divine appointment. It wasn't by accident. This is the stuff that happens within God's kingdom. And God is saying, I love you, Ethiopian. I love you, Philip. Thank you, Philip, for being obedient. Thank you, Philip, for for listening to the call and doing what I'm asking you to do. Thank you, Ethiopian, for searching and seeking out truth. And I'm going to help you guys. I'm going to bring you together. And that was the divine appointment. Another obvious divine appointment occurs in Acts 10. The Lord makes it clear to Peter and Cornelius in advance through separate revelations that they are to be key players in a monumentous encounter. That was one of the biggest divine moments in our faith. Because if Peter and Cornelius don't come together, Peter doesn't have that revelation. Remember when he was saying, well, no, wait, I know that it's to the Gentiles too. Mm. And this is all what happened. And I'm going to share you my story. And that is because of a divine appointment. God showed up and says, I'm going to make that often happen. But, you know, with a divine appointment, the reality and the significance of the event are not recognized sometimes till afterwards. Remember, so for Peter... He's like, what is going on? They're speaking tongues, they're doing this. What's going on? But then later he's like, no, I remember back when this, and this is what happened in his testimony. He says, to me, that was a divine appointment. There's no doubt that God is saying this to the Gentiles. And then here's Paul coming in and saying the exact same thing. So again, God confirms things. God shows up in your life. You just got to be available to him. Ethiopian's available. Peter was available. Philip was available. Are you available? Be available. God's going to do a divine appointment all the time in your life. And what a great reminder. Yeah. All right. In Acts 12, verses 6 through 11, Peter suddenly realizes that his dream of escaping from prison has, in reality, just happened. See verse 11. Frequently, um, hours and days and sometimes even years go by before we finally grasp in amazement what God has been working in our path, delivering us from evil through various divine appointments. So, I mean, I remember there's a part in the in the Bible where Jesus, they were up ready to throw rocks at him or whatever, and the crowd was all ready to crucify him and kill him right then. And it says Jesus walked right through them. Yeah. And and I've had moments like that in my own life where I've been in a situation and I have no idea how I got out of it. I have no idea. I just know that whatever just happened was supernatural. And, and God got me out of it. And I'm looking back on it. And I'm thinking, wait. Did that just happen? Did, did what in the world? You know, and this is kind of what happened with with Peter. Those are divine appointments. Those are things like you're you're in a situation. The mountain is huge. You have no idea how you're going to get out of it. You're basically under lock and key. And then the next thing you know is you're looking back and you're going, "Wait, how did that happen again? How did how did I just get through this?" That is a divine appointment. God showed up in a miraculous way to get you out of the mess or the jam or whatever that is that you were in. And you're just, you have to give it what it is. God did it. Give him glory. But in Joseph's experience, a good portion of his life has passed before him. He fully comprehend that his brother's betrayal and selling him into slavery had been a divine appointment. Remember what he said in Genesis 50, 20? He says, you tended to harm me but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. So in the midst of what he was going through, he didn't understand it. He didn't get it. It was like, what in the world is all of this? But God had a greater picture here and God took him out of the dungeons. And here he is putting him into the second highest ranking of the whole kingdom. And Egypt at that time was very powerful. And so it's it's kind of hilarious, but God does that. That's the divine appointment. It's like, what in the world? But if we we serve the God that does that, you know, that's the God that we serve. He does some miraculous, crazy things 
and he's just good. Yeah. You know? Do we trust that he's good? Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. I mean, because in the midst of it, you can't see it. Yeah. But looking back, Joseph could certainly see. Oh yeah. Oh wow. That all this time. Yeah. All the time. It's like I look back on some of my my experiences. Like, there's no way. There's no doubt. I'll tell you one another one that just popped in my head. I was I was snorkeling in Catalina. There's an island off of California called Catalina. And there's, it's great for snorkeling and so forth. Well, anyways, I'm out there snorkeling and I had an asthma attack, right? And um, I stopped breathing and I blacked out. And the next thing that I know is I was picked up and I was put on a rock further away. And I have no idea how I've had that happen. And so I went back and, I, and I'm looking at everybody says, how did I get there? They go, I have no idea. And I says, well, I just completely blacked out and had an asthma attack and I couldn't breathe. And now here I'm on this rock, how'd that happen? Something, someone somehow picked me up and put in. That was a divine appointment. And and who got praise? Well, God did, but he didn't get praise during the time. After the fact, I was like, wait a minute, that was a God moment. God showed up. There was a divine appointment there. And he saved me from drowning in that moment. So that's kind of, that's another I uh, thought. Process. I've never heard that story. All right. God is always working to bring about his sovereign purposes in our lives. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom foreknew, for he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. See Romans 8, 28 through 30. Yeah, so I mean, the context here is... If God is bringing a divine appointment into your life, that means he has a purpose and a plan for you. And, 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 and it's, it's, he's basically saying to you, I've never left you nor forsake you. I'm working things together right now. I'm, there's a reason why I'm connecting Philip to the Ethiopian. There's a reason why I'm, I'm taking you out of the water and I'm putting you on the rock. I have a purpose. I have a plan for your life. And, and it's always about me. And that's what he's saying. So these verses from the New Testament articulate the Christian doctrine of predestination and affirm the belief that God has a purposeful design for believers' lives, shaping them to reflect the character of Jesus. If his ultimate goal in our lives is that we walk as Jesus walked, that we think as Jesus thought, that we do the things that Jesus does— I remember when Satan says, hey, you can bring, you know, a thousand, uh, Jesus said to, to Satan and he said to the Pharisees, if I wanted to, I could bring a, a cohort of angels down and boom, 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 boom. Well, we could do the same thing, you know, as, as believers. We have that power, that authority, but it would only be given to us if it was to glorify God. If it was a glorified man or do something else, it's not going to happen. But the same thing goes with divine appointments. Those divine appointments are given to you not most of the time because you're not asking for them. It, it's just happening. Mm -hmm. But it's they're given to you so that God is going to be glorified in it. And just recognize them, praise them, say, wow, that was amazing. But that happens. All right. We also know that God is always close to us. Psalm 139, 7 through 12 says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. I mean, like I always said, like, what if I was at the, the lowest part of the ocean in a submarine? I was there. What if I was in a spaceship, the farthest, per, farthest part of space I can go, God is there. I, I can never escape his presence. And, and at any moment, God can bring a divine appointment. If I needed a, an oxygen or something in the lower because it fulfilled his purpose, he'll do it. You know, if I lost something and all of a sudden a miracle thing happened, well, I don't know, God could do it. If I'm in space and I needed something and I and I needed a spoon for no reason, and here comes a spoon floating by. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I know it sounds funny, but those that's what happens with God. That's that's the divine appointments. God does supernatural things because he's always close to us. He's all he's never left us or forsaken us. He's always right there. And he's always protecting us and guiding us and directing us. And he just wants us to know that he's about our life. He's he he cares about us. You know, he shows up to our events. He shows up to the things. Even your family might not, but God will always be there. 
But these verses eloquently express the psalmist's understanding of God's omnipresence. There is no place where one can escape from the presence of God. For even in the furthest or darkest places, he is there. God is continually advancing our life's assigned mission and countless divine appointments, whether we sense them or not. So that's the bottom line. If you're a follower of Christ and you're truly surrendered to him and you're waiting on him and you're letting him be God of your life, there's divine appointments every day. It's not by chance. It's it just, it is what it is, you know? And I pray that we start recognizing them more. I mean, I, I'm sure if I started thinking about it, I can, we can do 10 shows on divine appointments right now. It's, it's just, you it just really start being aware of it hmm. and start looking and seeing, wow. And then recognize that, wow, God is here. God's presence is here. Give him glory for it. All right. Yeah. He doesn't leave us here for no reason. No. If, we're, if we're still here, there's a purpose. That's it. And if our purpose is done, then we'll be done. Well, that's it. There's, We're expired. There's, there's no reason to yeah. be here. All right. We must avoid becoming overly preoccupied with dramatic divine appointments, looking for them at every turn. Our sinful nature may be tempted to seek signs and confirmations from people who make us feel especially loved by God and significant in, in his kingdom. Plenty of charlatans and even heretics will say whatever your itching ears want to hear. It will not be the truth. Uh, that references to Second Timothy four yeah. oh, verses yeah. three and four. Yeah. Again, I we bring this up because we there's a lot of people out there that are saying there, I have the divine yeah. power and I'm gonna give this to you and you need to come to me. Who's and, getting the glory? That I think that the quickest way to find out if it's real or not. Who's getting the glory? It's are, everywhere. I mean, it's it's pastors, there's preachers. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna call out one, Benny Hinn. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many out there that 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 are doing these things and they're thinking, Oh, you know, I got to get there. That's divine appointment. God's, you know, doing that. And, or we just become preoccupied with this. Mm -hmm. We're just, our whole life is consumed by this, but a healthy spiritual focus is grounded in God's word and guided by his truth. Let me say that again. A healthy spiritual focus should always be grounded in God's word and guided by his truth. If we only pursue sensational and miraculous moments, we will miss the farm a far more important fact of God's constant daily care and intervention on our behalf through the intercession of his son and the Holy Spirit. We are better off letting God bring these experiences to our attention in his perfect time as he sees fit. We can't force them. We can only trust God's sovereign plan and respond according to his will. But I promise you, if you're as sensitive to this, I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of believers are not even turned on to this. They don't recognize that that's what's happening, right? I think they're kind of oblivious. So we're bringing this to your attention to let you know, no, there's divine appointments happening all the time, but you're not aware of them. And I think God wants you to be aware of them. I think God wants you to be sensitive to these, but not be over, overcome by them, not to be consumed by them. Don't try to manufacture them. Because that will not be a divine appointment. Do not force it. Just <laughs> let God, but just acknowledge that. So next time your car doesn't start and you don't have time or whatever is going on in your circumstance and you pray right there for your car and then it starts, that's a divine appointment. Next time you don't have a clue who you're going to call and, and, or what you're going to do to fix the garage or whatever, you have no money or whatever. And all of a sudden this person comes up, that's a garage door opener guy. And he has the exact same part that you need in there. And he does it for free for you. Don't, don't look past and say, that's a coincidence. That's a divine appointment. That's what happens when you're walking with God. It's constant. He takes care of those. And he's, what he's telling you is I'm here. I love you. I'm protecting you. I'm guiding you. I'm providing for you. I'm going to get you through this. But more importantly, I'm doing this so that your faith increases. Mm. I want the glory and I want you to com completely know me and be known by me. And so that's what he's doing. So. I'm teaching you. I'm refining you. Yeah. Like Joseph passing through his difficult ordeal, we may not always detect God's behind the scenes activity in our lives. But all Christians can be sure that in every moment of every day, God is working out everything in conformity with his will. And again, I mean, just as just reiterating what I was just saying, it's, we have to understand that there's right now you listening to this could be a divine appointment. That's right. We don't know why you're listening to this. We don't know what God's doing in your life right now, but for whatever reason, God has put it on your heart or giving you the attention to listen to what we're saying. God could be telling you something. 
You know, he's sharing something to you. He's maybe saying, hey, remember what I just did last week? That was a divine appointment. You didn't say anything to me. Uh, I'm still here, right? Or whatever. Give me praise. Give me glory. Or he might be having you humble yourself, whatever it is. But God's purpose for every believer is sanctification, a lifelong process of being transformed into the image and the character of Jesus. Ephesians 1, 4, 11 says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he has lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his purpose, which is set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things together to good for those the counsel of his will. So this, again, why does he give divine appointments? Why are these happening? Because he is using it to sanctify you. He's telling you that you can't do this on your own. You need him. You, he's, he's the author and finisher of your faith. He's the beginning and the end of everything. Just trust him. When he divine encounters happens, you acknowledge right there, you're human, you're flawed, you're flesh, and he is powerful. He is good. He is almighty, and he's doing a work in you, and he has a purpose for you, and he has a plan for you, and just continue to keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't be stale. Don't be stagnant. Just keep moving forward. Keep loving him. Keep pursuing him. Keep surrendering to him. Keep discipling others and advancing his kingdom one disciple at a time. Be obedient and keep going forward. That's what God said. For every divine appointment. Totally, totally good. All right, let's close with this. The most crucial divine appointment of our lives is that glorious day we encounter Jesus Christ. It is the moment when we respond to God's voice calling us to come to him, repent of our sins, and be saved. John 6, 44 and Hebrews 3, 8. Like the woman who encounters Jesus at the well, we surrender our lives to him and drink from God's eternal fountain of living water. John 4, 7 through 38. From then on, we abide in Jesus, remaining in him and bearing much fruit, John 15, 5. I, you just said it there. So if you're a follower of Christ um, and you're not experiencing divine encounters or divine appointments, then you might want to ask, are you really following closely to Jesus? Are you surrendered to him the way that you should be? Because God is, is always at work and you should be able to see these and recognize these, right? But here's the other thing, is not just not experiencing divine appointments or knowing that God's at work around you, but if you're not bearing fruit, that should be a testimony right there. I mean, when you're around other believers, are other believers munching off of you? Are you just there? Are they, are they actually um, benefiting from your presence? I mean, because... When you're, when I'm around others, I'm always asking myself, am I encouraging? Am I loving? Am I lifting up? Is, is what I'm saying producing fruit? Is it, is it benefiting and glorifying God? Is it, is it, is it aligned with his perfect will, his perfect truth? Is my obedience being reflected here? Am I humble here? Am I, am I, am I living a life that's pleasing to him? Are my words filled with love? Are they gentle? Are they kind? Are they they filled with hope and passion and love? And, and truthfully, if that is not you, then there's there's maybe an uh, alignment in your life that's not right. And, and there's something that's hindering you from having this and having the fruit of the Spirit and having a testimony that's impacting. You know, we want to, you know, we want to be used by God that everywhere we go, it's it's glorifying him. And if we're just another despot, we're just another person that's there, but not really making any impact, what how are we fulfilling God's purpose? How are we being obedient to what God is asking of us to do? Really, what what are we doing? You know, I've been around people that have that have been like they don't have ma major teaching ministries. They're like behind the scenes kind of people. But every time I'm in their presence, I am impacted by them. 
And there's something that they, how they speak, how they talk, it's just, it's filled with goodness. It's filled with love. It's filled with fruit. I'm munching on them. And, and I come to find out they're prayer warriors. I come to find out that they're obedient and they just are, they do the things of God all the time, but that, but behind the scenes, nobody knows about it. And, and that's what I want. I want, are, is your life reflecting upon people where they said, I want to have that too. I want to have that munch. I want to have that goodness in me. I want to have that joy. And so divine appointments happen, but sometimes we're so blind by our worldly lust and our worldly cares. We're so, we, we care more about our job than we do about doing God's job or doing, you know, being obedient to him and being a part of what he's doing, I should say. And, and we're just, we lose sight. We lose sight of why we're here. We lose sight of our purpose. We don't have the fruit that he's asking. So anyway, every day and every moment is a re- in our relationship with Je- Jesus is a divine appointment. Every day when I wake up and say, good morning, God, I love you. You know, Lord, I'm here. I surrender my life to you. God, I send me, do with me how you please, Lord. Give me eyes to see, ears to hear. That's a divine appointment. God is saying, I'm here, son, I'm listening. And then those moments where he convicts me of my sin, or he's, he tells me, son, why are you doing that? You're breaking my heart. Why do you continue to think that? Why are you continuing in that sin or that pathway? You know that it's not best for you. And, and it's, that's a divine appointment. Right. Those are the moments where I have to choose to bend my knee. I have to choose to say, God, you are more than enough. I don't need anything else. Just give me Jesus. And I just pray, if you're listening to this, that you're humbled, that your life is impacted, but more than anything else, that you have eyes to see and ears to hear because God is always at work around you. And what he desires more than anything else is to have that intimate relationship with you. He just desires to love you. He desires to bless you. He desires to take care of you. And he just wants to make himself known to you. And so if you've given your life to the Lord, but you feel that you need to repent, then maybe right now is the time to do it. Maybe it's time to just say, God, I want more of you. I want to see more of the, uh, the divine appointments in my life. I want to be more fruitful and impactful in my life. I just desire that. So just repent and say, God, I want that. Lord, help me. You know, maybe you need to be discipled and maybe there's hangups and give us a call, reach out. We'll love to take you through the keys of being set free and disciple you in one-on-one. Just reach out to us and we'll do that. Get a, get a hold of us. But if you haven't given your life to the Lord, right now is the time. Why wait? Tomorrow you no, is not promised to anybody. Today's the day. If God has convicted you, that's a divine appointment. God's telling you right now, it's not a coincidence that you're here. You listen to this because you're supposed to give your life to Jesus now. That's, I, I could say that with boldness. I know that for a fact. He's telling you right now, you're supposed to give him your life to him. And so just stop fighting and just say, God, I repent of my sins. I ask you, God, to forgive me. I know that I've done it my way for too long. I confess my sins. I surrender my life to you now. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again on the third day. I believe that you did that so that I can have eternal, eternal life with you for all forever. And, and if you did that, then all the angels in heaven are rejoicing with you. They're rejoicing. We're rejoicing with you. And we would love to get you started. We would love to help you out in your journey and your next steps. And so we would love for you to reach out to us. Bob, how could they reach out? Yeah, Pete, the best way, just go to our website, The Riot Podcast. Go to the No God tab. Scroll down there. There's a place to reach out to us. Um, give us your contact information. And there's tons of resources there, too, to just kind of answer any questions you may be having. But if you can't find it there, man, just reach out to us. And you can do that through our website. You can do it through social media. Go to Facebook. You can go to X. We would love to hear your comments and your questions and uh it would be our honor and privilege to, to respond and answer those as well. Um, Pete, man, what a great show. You know, as you, as you were wrapping up there, one of the, the two words that just kept coming to my mind 
were, am I a consumer or am I a producer? <laughs> and that, that just kept resonating <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> like, man, I don't want to just be a consumer. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, you're like, man, it just, uh, yeah, that was I, good though. Thank you for sharing your heart. That was, I, I love, I love hearing, uh, your openness and your your rawness that was that was awesome. I hope our hear our listeners could hear that as well. Mm. But man, God bless you guys. Right. We love you and uh, mm. just have an amazing week of worship. Be blessed, guys. This has been the Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of the Riot Podcast.